Hey guys, it's been a while. All right. So I'm getting some questions about gaps, lands, uh, spaces, all that stuff. I've got a friend of mine uh, that reached out to me and asked me uh, to help him. He's having some trouble with his horizontal, which would be 5G, uh, his root, and mainly the cap. That's The filler usually takes care of itself, usually. So I'm going to tell you what I do. That's all I can do. Everybody's different. A lot of people use a nickel, a nickel land and a nickel spacer. Um, that seems about right for the land. And if you're not familiar with the land is, that's the face that you put on the pipe. When you bevel it, it's sharp, and then you're going to grind a place because if you don't, it'd be too thin. It'd be blowing out of time. If it's too thick, uh, it's kind of hard to get in there, but you can gap it. If you do have a thick land, just because pipe's not always right, you can gap it a little more. Now, some people are using a nickel for a spacer. That is, in my opinion, way too big. So I thought I would put this to bed right now. Uh, I was... I've tried everything under the sun. That's what I do. I, I try to improve on everything every day. And if you've ever seen me, any of my videos, and I'm welding a piece of pipe, I used this spacing band. And if it wasn't this one, it was one exactly the same. I lost the last one in the mud hole, I think. <laughs> but uh, this is a piece of uh, a, a strap. Like they, they bind stuff down on trailers like it might have come off a train car. My father works for UP, and he had a big sheet of it, and I cut up some of them, or a sheet, a big stick of it. And I picked it up off the ground and said, Dad, this is perfect, <laughs> just by looking at it. But you can tell the difference between this and a nickel. All right, there's a big difference. And just so we can put this to bed forever and ever, what I use every day, what I go out of my way to use is... 50 thousandths. It's a little under a sixteenth. A nickel is 76 thousandths. So there's quite a bit of difference there. So I would say the land can be a nickel or maybe a little more, maybe a little less. You can control all this with your heat. The space is going to be, if you do a nickel land on the face of your pipe, and space it with 50 thousandths, you will be doing what I like the best. So I hope that helps. Now, here's a few other tips on your horizontal. Uh, there's a lot of people that get hung up on it. The problem with horizontal is it, it gravity fights you. Uh, you know, including the bead, the beetle sack if it's too heavy. That's why I like to tighten it up just a little bit. And a lot of welders weld even tighter than I do. They like a, hardly any gap at all. The machine runs a little hotter. Everybody's different. Um, so two things happen when you use a smaller gap. Usually you can control it by your helper running the heat. If your gap's just right, just right amount, you can just jam it in there. It'll keyhole. When it starts to close up, you can say up five, up. If it starts to open up and get too big, you can try to cram it down there and whip it a little bit. If that's not going to do it, turn it down, down five, okay? Uh, you'll hear me in my videos, down, up, down. I don't, you know, when it starts happening and I know it, because the more you do it, the more you'll know, you can go up and down on your heat and you don't even have to do that much, whipping and all this stepping and stuff like that. You can really control it with the heat, gap, and land. It, when it all comes together for you guys, it'll just be, it'll be second nature. You'll start to learn what, what's going to happen before it happens. Because after it happens, it's too late. Then you got to hold, and then you got to turn it down, and then you're too cold, and you got to turn it back up. So once you get there, you'll be there, and you'll, it'll be second nature. Don't uh, lose motivation. You'll get through this. This too shall pass. Now, you've got your bead in. You put your hot pass in. Now, okay, sometimes in school they wanted us to do a 7018 hot pass. Uh, and that was odd. That's very unusual. Uh, where I've been working, uh, most of the time it's a 6010 or a 70 plus hot pass, and then they fill with 7018 and cap with 7018. Now, regardless, you got to do what the inspector wants and what the company, the inspector is going to do what the company wants. 
And if he's not, then he's not doing his job. And if you're not, you're not doing your job. So really try to do what they want. If you can put a 6010, a little, a little quick hot pass, it'll really burn those wagon tracks out and it will get it out of the bevel. It, it'll get you out a little bit because it's hard to move that 7018, you know, if it's too tight. So if you can put one pass of 6010 or 70 plus, it'll get it out where you can get your 7018 in there. And let's say you manage to get the bead and the hot pass and you're, you're filling it. All right, on your filler, leave it just a little bit low, just a little bit. Capping with 7018 now, that's what I'm talking about. I got a rod here. Leave it just a little bit low. Probably, I'd say, let's just say a nickel. Yeah, maybe a little less. Just a little lip. You do not want to burn that shoulder off the pipe. When I'm talking shoulder, I'm talking about when your bevels are like this, you want to leave it just a little bit low because if you, if you distort those bevels, uh, you, you won't really know where you're going and uh, it makes a nice straight line and it gives a place for the metal to kind of hang on. All right, here's another tip. As you're making that first pass and you're, you're, you're hanging on that, I hope y'all can see that. Here's your bevel and you're, you're kind of coming up just a little bit and hesitating at the top and then coming down and then hesitate at the top come down hesitate at the top come down you're you're trying to hold it up there to let it get up there and don't spend a lot of time on the downside uh the metal the gravity is going to fight you and it'll it'll kind of spill over but having that not being full having it below flush just a little bit will help you help it kind of stay up there and if you're still having trouble with it looking like waves and spilling over turn it down just a little bit uh, those two things should correct it and after you get that first one you should just be able to lay the next one on there just straight just not don't bury it on there away from it just a little bit it'll kind of help spread the arc out and it'll flatten it out some and you can usually just go now it depends on if you got a, a big bevel to fill up uh, you you might do a little, uh, you know, it's all different. It's hard to say. You, know, you might do some circles, but you're going you're gonna to hesitate on the top. That goes for capping with a 70 plus too. I one bead cap most everything. I've had people tell me I couldn't do it forever, and I know how to do it. Hesitate on the top. It's, it's that simple. Come up, kind of hesitate right there, and then make you another one. Kind of hesitate and make you another one. So on your horizontals, remember, hesitate up there and not so much on the bottom. Hesitate, not so much above. And if it's drooping over, turn it down a little bit. Start there. If y'all have any other questions like this, uh, I'll try to walk you through it. Uh, and that's it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. I'll keep giving these little welding tips. Uh, and one day I'll have the equipment and the time to make actual welding videos where I'm actually burning the rod, but there's not enough time in the day and uh, it's almost impossible to work 12 hours a day and make videos uh, like that. These are uh, what I've got. So I hope this helps. Have an awesome day, guys. Later.